I'm back at Kevin's home in Limuru and I wanted to give you finishing updates uh, as the project continues. So right, currently I'm standing on the driveway and to my left we have Kevin's home. You can appreciate the panels. And right now on this side we have the parapet wall made of stone blocks. When you come to the front of the home, they're currently installing uh, the hidden roof, the parapet wall. Uh, right over there. So you can appreciate uh, from this view how Kevin wants to hide his Mabati covers using uh, the stone blocks. Uh, here we have the stone blocks, the yellow stone blocks sourced from my Mahiu. It's, it's a very common stone to find here in Limuru because of the proximity. So for the dimensions it's four inches thick, seven and a half inches high, and in terms of length, it's 15 inches in length. On this side, we have the team that is currently installing uh, the parapet wall. They're doing the brickwork, laying the stone blocks. That will continue until it reaches the height where you can't see the Mabati covers. Uh, so this is Kevin's front facade. And I'd like to see, I'll come back next week and show you uh, how, how it will look like. This process will take like a few a few days, like three or, three or so days. Uh, they lay the, the stones and then they plaster it to create a, a neat finish, a seamless integration with the panels. Because you see the panels are made of concrete and since plaster is cement and sand, it will have a similar look. So that the parapet wall and the precast panels, they all look the same. All right. Now, this is the living room, and from the last video that I published on the channel, there's a slight difference uh, with today's update. So, they've already done the ceiling brandering. This will, uh, will, will enable the gypsum ceiling to be installed. And when you come here, the electrical team, they are doing their work today as well. You can see that they've, done, uh, they've cut the socket boxes and installed the wiring. Uh, at appropriate places within the living room and uh, also in other rooms of the house. Uh, so here we have the, the electrical wiring, the live wire, the earth wire, all that. That's what they're doing today. All right, guys. So here you can see uh, the electrical team, they're installing the consumer unit for the entire house. Uh, this is where the electricity will be distributed for all the rooms. So that's, the, so that's one of the works that is currently ongoing. You can appreciate uh, the, the electrical pipes. They're passing through the hollow sections uh, of the panels. So for them, it has been easy to, to do. They're able to do their work faster. And also for you as a client, uh, it saves you time. So you can see, you can appreciate the, the electrical pipes. They'll pass there through the sockets and everywhere across the house. So even this socket, the electrical pipe has passed within the hollow section and then the wiring will be done here. Now I'm entering the laundry room and this is where you can actually appreciate today's works. Here we have the wastewater pipe for all the laundry, all the washing that will take place here. It's, this pipe has been dug into the foundation to lead all the wastewater away from this room. Here we have also another wastewater uh, pipe, but this is now for the sink. This will now, you can see, we have this pipe passing through the hollow section into the foundation where they've dug a trench that will lead all the water away, away from the sink. Here we have the socket and the wiring passing through the hollow section within the pipe. And for electricians, this is something that they really appreciate for the, because it makes their work easier. And also the same has been done here for this socket. It's the 30th of August and Kevin's dream home is coming up pretty well. Here we can see the panels, which acts now as the walling for his home. Here we have the foundation and right at the top we have the plastered parapet wall. As you can see in the last uh, finishing update that I did, 
you were able to see the stone blocks but now it's been plastered to create a consistent look for the home before painting begins. So we have uh, precast concrete panels that have the concrete finish and also the parapet hole that has the plastered finish because of the plaster. Now there are some design changes that I've seen and that Kevin has adopted for his home. Uh, here at the corner you can see that they've done some design molding with uh, also with plaster. I think he'll do some bit of paintwork here, some sort of uh, design thing to create an interesting feature for the corner. And also, uh, when we come to the front facade, you can see that they've done some concrete molding on the windows. So it, you can see that there's uh, uh, this protruding uh, mold that is uh, going around the perimeter of the window. So that's something that he has done. And also, uh, don't mind the noise. Uh, there's a team that, is, that, that are doing the brandering for the ceiling inside said the living room but when we come here you're able to see some new things here also where the remember in the last video i showed you where the the, the sea channel that holds uh, the panels and you also have the, the three by two rhs section so where they meet well, now we have a concrete mold going around to hide that uh, to hide the steel so this molding will provide two things. One, it will act as a design transition between the panels and the parapet roof. And secondly, the concrete plaster will protect the steel from rust. Here, we, where the panels meet, you can see that they've done some plastering at the joints. So this protects, so this holds the panels and also creates a neat finish between uh, one panel and the other one. I'm on top of Kevin's roof and I'm doing that to illustrate a point. Here we have the Mabati covers and over there we have the parapet wall. Now you can see that they've done some plastering at the edge where this Mabati cover and the parapet wall meet. This is a waterproofing plaster that is done all around the perimeter of the parapet wall and that is done because we want to create a permanent seal where water won't leak later on inside the roof. So here they've used waterproofing cement and a mix of finely sieved sand to achieve this. And of course they'll come later on to do a smooth plaster. Uh, once they've done the rough plaster, they'll come and apply a smooth plaster all around so that the surface becomes smooth and water can flow from the parapet wall to the middle gutter right over there. But before they, they did uh, this plastering, they put mabati, smooth mabati. Uh, I think you'll see it over there. Right there at that parapet wall. If you can show, if the cameraman can show that, you see right over there the edge, they're doing the plastering right on top of that mabati cover, which has been nailed on the parapet wall. And then they'll come and do the smooth plaster later on. So the main point here is that this plaster right done over here is done using waterproofing cement, which is very, very important as that is what will prevent rainwater from seeping into the roof later on in future. Kevin has also installed a water tower structure made of steel and it will house a small tank, I think of about 2,000, 2,500 liters right at the top. So that will provide water via gravity to the solar water heater and to the home. Kevin has now installed a solar water heater system. And this model is called the flat plate solar water heater. Here we have the tank that will store the hot water and just below it we have two flat roof solar collectors. At the top here there is a glazed uh, glass sheet that protects uh, the copper tubes beneath and it also ensures that the sun's radiation and the sun's heat 
is trapped well inside uh, the, the collector. So inside the copper tubes, we have glycol, propylene glycol, which is an anti-freeze chemical that prevents the water from freezing. And that's very important in climates where there is winter. But here in Kenya, that's really not an issue. But also the propylene glycol, because of its anti-freeze properties, it helps in the absorption of heat from the sun. So it's that uh, chemical that will trap the heat from the sun and transfer it to the tank. So how, how does this work? Uh, let's assume it's a very hot day. The sun is shining directly on top of the flat roof collectors. So it hits the glaze sheet first, then the sun's heat penetrates inside, hitting the copper tubes. And inside the copper tubes, we have the propylene glycol, which is that antifreeze chemical. Once the glycol is heated up, it uh, flows upwards through a process called convection. And once it heats up, any cold water that was, that was inside the tank gets heated up. So this system is called a pressurized indirect system. That means that uh, water doesn't really flow inside here. It, all the house water that is going to be used is stored inside the tank and it's only the glycol that gets heated up by the sun. Once it gets heated up, it flows upwards where it hits the water inside this tank. And cold water is going to flow inside this tank from the overhead 2,500 litre tank that Kevin has installed right over there. So the water will flow into the tank, the cold water, into the tank, into the solar tank by gravity, where it will get heated up by the propylene glycol, converting it into hot water, which will flow through the hot water piping system. And as I can see, also Kevin has, uh, there's some electrical connection that has been done on this solar water heater. So I think uh, that's a thermostat, which will be able to regulate the temperatures and also boost the temperatures of the tank if the sun's energy isn't enough. I, I made a video about flat plate solar water heater systems a while back. I link that video in the card that will appear somewhere at the top here. So you can watch that video to understand more about this type of solar water heater system. In the last update, you remember that they were plastering the parapet wall and where the Mabati covers meet. And this is now the finish that we have achieved in this week. So this has been done all across the perimeter of the hidden roof. We have a waterproofing cement, which will create the waterproofing plaster that prevents rainwater from seeping into the gypsum ceiling below. Uh, they'll also do some bit of plastering to hide these stone blocks so that everything looks neat and clean and uh, presentable. Right now, in the living room, we have the gypsum ceiling. So here we have the boards arranged neatly just to hide the brandering underneath or rather above uh, the ceiling boards. So if you come over here, this is how the ceiling boards look like when you buy it from the shop. They measure eight feet in length and four feet in width. The interior has also been done where the panels interlock inside the living room and also all the rooms inside the home. Where the panels join, we have some plaster to hide the interlocking joints and to also make uh, the wall finish looks seamless and flawless so that when the skimming process starts the wall is smooth and even so that's that's been done as you can see here we have one two three and so on it's been done from top to bottom where they interlock to hide that joint and to also increase its bonding strength uh, if you come here also on the ceiling, we have uh, lighting points that have been drilled uh, according to the placement of uh, the lighting for Kevin's living room. And that has also been done for all the other rooms inside. It's the 11th of September and welcome to Kevin's living room. As you can see, it's coming alive now. We have some color to the room instead of uh, the precast gray color. We have skimming filler that has been applied on the walls 
to create this smooth finish before painting begins. And here we have the bags that contain the, the skim filler. So two coats are applied on the walls. So the first coat is applied to hide the panels and to remove the roughness of the wall. Then the second coat is, to, is applied to create smoothness on the wall so that painting can begin. Also, we have uh, the gypsum cornices across the perimeter of all the rooms. And this time around, the gypsum ceiling also has a skim coat. Two coats are also applied here, then it will be sanded, then painting will commence later on. So the gentleman is doing the skim coat just above the window. As we come into the kitchen, skimming is currently ongoing. And where we don't have a skim coat, they'll apply wall tiles later on. So this is now how the kitchen is coming up. It's currently being designed. I think this will now be the sink space, uh, the bottom uh, cabinetry and all that. A lot of you are asking how the concrete molding is done uh, across the windows. So here we have the net. This is a steel wire mesh and then the plaster is applied on top of it. So the steel wire mesh does two things. One, it creates more surface area for the plaster. Uh, to be applied and to hold. And secondly, it helps to increase the, the tensile strength of the concrete plaster so that it will be able to support itself once it cures like <laughs> it has over here. So here we have the plaster that is uh, plastered across the, the wall and then it will be designed to create the molding for this particular window just beneath the veranda. This is a solar intelligent controller for the flat plate solar water heater that was installed at the rooftop. From here, Kevin and his family can be able to monitor the temperature uh, that the flat plate collector is getting from the sun. And they can also be able to adjust the temperature settings according to their desire. So it's good to have such a unit if you're going to use a solar water heater so that you can be able to adjust uh, the temperature according to your needs, according to the climate, and according to the temperature that you want.